Uncle Paul here, and welcome to the Uncle Paul's Ark Bible Time, where we study God's Word, grow in it, and hide it in our hearts that we may never sin against the Lord our God. And today, I have the privilege of having my beautiful niece, Joy. Hey, it's nice to have you, Joy. Pleasure. Yes. Thank At you. least when you're here, then I can also enjoy the company of Shanka Zidena. Oh. There's a way the two of you just blend your voices. Ah. But do we say, guys? You don't say. Let me humble myself. Humble yourself. Hallelujah. Anyway, we are here to worship and to praise the Lord. And we, it's always so much fun to hang out with these lovely, lovely ladies. Joy, yes, open for us in prayer. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for this other beautiful day that God has given us and given us the opportunity to come here and worship you, Lord, with praises and hear from your word, Lord. We pray that as we read your word, May we keep it in our hearts. Help us, oh God. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 We thank the Lord. Now, in this world we will have tribulations. Mm. In this world we will have challenges. Okay. In this world we will have many, many difficulties. That's true. But the Lord tells us to cast them all to Him. Yeah. Ah. You. your burdens unto Jesus, for he cares for you. Cast your burdens unto Jesus, for he cares for you.
of our praise. All right, and because of that, we want to know the Lord. We want to know Him in the noontime, in the morning, all the time. We want to walk in the knowledge of who He is. And because of that, we can sing and say, I want to know you. I want to know you. to know you I want to know you I want to see 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 you
want to know you. I want to know you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. So today's lesson brings us to the end of the study of the character Elisha. There is so much for us to study about Elisha and we cannot possibly bring it to an end so soon. But yet, we today we'll be concluding what we've been talking about, Elisha. And then beginning next week, we will be venturing into other characters in the Bible. And I'm sure the Lord will use his word to bless us. So today's lesson is going to be drawn from the book of 2 Kings chapter 6. Joy, you read it for us? Okay. Okay. Oh, let, me, let me have the honors. So there you go. That is uh, 2 Kings chapter 6, beginning from verse 1 to seven. verse 7. Yes. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 1 to 7. The company of prophets said to Elisha, Look, the place where we meet with you is too small for us. Let us go to the Jordan, where each of us can get a pole, and let us build a place there for us to meet. And he said, Go. Then one of them said, Won't you please come with your servants? I will, Elisha replied, and he went with them. They went to the Jordan and began to cut down trees. As one of them was cutting down a tree. The iron axe fell into the water. Oh no, my Lord, he cried. It was borrowed. The man of God asked, where did it fall? When he showed him the place, Elisha cut a stick and threw it in there and made the iron float. Lift it out, he said. The man reached out his hand and took it. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you. This is one of those amazing stories in the Bible. <clears throat> and uh, Elisha keeps good company. He has many people who are following or wanting or desiring to learn from him. And so he would bring them together and, um, and he would teach them God's word. Now you need to understand that during the time of Elisha, the general thing that people used to do was to walk away from God. So many people were worshipping false gods. In fact, the man of God before Elisha was called Elijah. Elisha um, used to be a servant of a man called Elijah. And Elijah one time was so discouraged he told God, you know what, I would just rather die. And when God asked him why, and he says, because I'm the only one who worships God in Israel. Because everywhere he looked, when he looked to the right, people were worshipping false gods. When he looked to the left, to the front, to the back, it's like everybody was worshipping strange gods. And people were doing whatever they wanted. So if you were living during Elisha's days, many people, People did not care about God. And so Elisha, standing up to be a man who um, loved God, was also willing to train and bring people who are keen on following God near him and would teach them. Now, the most amazing thing is this the number of people wanting to follow after God, one, the number of people who are who are praying, I want to know God. They kept on increasing and increasing. Now, Elisha would meet them in a certain place and it became too small. You know, the number of rooms that were available were too small. They would be too squashed. And so these guys who used to hang out with Elisha told him, you know what, Elisha, this place has outgrown us. We have outgrown this place, rather. Not the other way around. We have outgrown this place. Um, give us permission. Let's go out near the Jordan and cut down some trees and we'll be able to construct something, uh, you know, a bigger space for us to be able to, to, be, to be living in. 
And Elisha says, okay, fine, go ahead, you have my blessing. And as everyone took the axe and everybody took whatever tool that they were going to use to cut down the trees and to build, but as they were about to leave, one of the men said, Elisha, why don't you be kind enough and, and come with us? And Elisha says, well, fine, let's go. And of course they went. And when they got there, they were all cutting trees and uh, everybody was looking for the best tree that would make the best, uh, you know, give the, the house the best strength. And, and uh, everybody was busy at work. And then all of a sudden, one of the guys who was cutting down a tree, the head of his axe, you know, kind of flipped out and it went and fell into the, into the river. Have you ever seen an axe? Yes. Where? In Ushago. In Ushago? Yes. Have you ever seen an axe? Of course. Yeah, of course. Mm. Yeah. All right. So how does an axe look like? We <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So an axe That's is a, you know, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a kind of a knife, yeah? So it has got... Um, it has got a, a stem, or rather the place where you, you know, the, the you hold. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of it, there is a, there is a head, mm -hmm. and that head is kind of sharp. So you hold here, and you use it to uh, cut down whatever it is that you're, mm -hmm. you're going to cut down. So when, when cutting down a strong tree, you would use an axe. You wouldn't, you, you wouldn't use a knife, because mm -hmm. then an axe is strong enough to be able to bring down the tree. Because of the, the head. Because of the head, which is uh, strong, it's made of strong steel mm -hmm. or iron, rather, mm -hmm. and it's sharp. And so, when you hit a tree, you are able to to do exactly what it is that you want to do. So this guy was doing his thing, and it got into the water. Yes. The head gets into the water, and all of a sudden, he screams and shouts, "Hey, it's in the water!" Uh, my, my axe head has fallen into the water and it's borrowed. It's not mine. Hey, maybe he thinks he's not been hard, so he runs to Elisha. Elisha says, Elisha, my, my axe head has fallen into the water and the worst part is it's not mine, it's borrowed. I, I mean, I don't have money to, to pay it back. And Elisha looks at him and says, did you see where it fell? And he says, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, right there. And uh, Elisha says, okay, take me. And he says, so this is where it fell? And Elisha broke down one of the, um, one of the sticks, one of the branches in the trees nearby, and he threw it into the water at the place where the, the spear, or not the spear, the axe's head had fallen. And a miracle happened. A head which is an axe head which is made of iron, heavy iron, floated. And then Elisha tells him, pick it up. And he picks it up, and the guy is like, You guy, my guy. You guy, my guy. Ah. How my goodness. And of course he takes it and he's no longer in fear of the person he had borrowed it from, and he has his axe back. Mm -hmm. And that is the end of our story. This is Amazing. Hey. Now, I don't know whether you've ever, okay, you've told me you guys have ever seen an axe. Yes. Did you see it on a photo, or you actually have ever, <laughs> have you ever lifted an axe? Yes. Joy, have you? You have. Eh? The heaviest part of the axe is there. The axe head. Is the axe head. Yes. Now, when that falls into water, does metal float? No, it sinks. So it's only a miracle mm. that would make it come back to the surface of the water. Yes. What do you learn from this story? Wow. So for me, I learned, first of all, that part where the prophet, the prophet uh, shouted, "Oh my lord!" He said, "Oh my lord!" Yes, he said, "Oh my oh, lord!" Oh no! Actually, it's oh no! 
Oh, it's all right. Oh, Lord, my Lord. Yes. It has fallen into the water. It has into the and water. it was borrowed. And it was borrowed. Yeah. It is good to ask for help when in need. Yes. That's what I'm learning. Yes. When you're in need, it is good to ask for help. Yes. Yes. Uh, and it's also good to admit when things are not yours. It's true, by the way. Do you want to See, it's yours, you just buy another. It is not mine, yeah. my friends. <laughs> Maybe it's at this point, I just want to appreciate that I really love your your black dress. It's I hope it's yours. <laughs> ah, it is mine. It's not bad. <laughs> it is not. Uncle, I see. <laughs> but it looks really nice on you. Thank you. Yes, yes, yeah. I think you're getting a weakness of becoming smart. Yes, it's the company. Uh, okay. <laughs> Fantastic. So there you are. You know, it's good for you in case you are in trouble, yeah. in case you need help, yes. ask for it. True. And that's true because, you see, the axe head could have fallen into the water mm-hmm. and the guy says, Kusha, I am finished. Mm. And he keeps quiet. Mm. And then he's getting stressed. He doesn't have money to repay it back. Mm. And you know those days, if you borrowed something from somebody and you were unable to pay it back, you become the slave of that person until you have worked for them for a period of time to be able to earn back what it is that you are supposed to pay back. And at that time, Iron was very rare in the country where Elisha was living. Mm-hmm. So it was very, very, very expensive. Mm-hmm. And so when he got into trouble, he asked for help. I like what you've learned. Mm-hmm. That in case of trouble, in case of need, ask for help. Ask for help. Yes. yes. And then I added, and if it's not yours, admit it's not yours. And also, even when asking for that help, you should know... Know where you're asking that help. Yes, yes. Because there are some people you tell them the axe has fallen into the water and they tell you you're lazy. Useless. You you just, you nobody can trust you with things. Even the man. Yeah. <laughs> I can't give you mine. But anyway, he knows who to ask for help mm. and the person helps him. Yeah. Joy, mm-hmm. did you learn anything? Interesting. Yeah, I see there's a great miracle over there. Yeah. That... With God, all things are possible. Mm-hmm. You know, when speaking of uh, asking for help, mm-hmm. with God, all things are, are possible. possible. Yes. Yeah, because, you know, that disobeys the law of nature. How does a metal float? Iron. Iron, yeah. Impossible. How does iron float? It's only through God's power. Yes. So, all things are possible with God. So, the, the rising of the axe head is not normal. It only takes, only God can do that, you know. Mm -hmm. There are some things that only God can be able to do. Mm -hmm. And um, this is a miracle. And we serve a miracle working God. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. Our God is a miracle worker. And he performs miracles, which are things that only he can do. In Elisha's case, we have seen many times when he's done miracles. God used Elisha, or God performed a miracle, and a lady who had a little oil was able to empty that little oil into jars and jars of uh, of oil, and she had enough to sell and be able to pay off all her debts. We've seen in the story of Elisha how he was able to save people who were going to eat from a pot that had poison. We've seen from Elisha God bringing back um, a dead boy back to life. Our God is a miracle-working God. He's able to do things that only he can do. So truly, there is nothing, absolutely nothing, Too too difficult or impossible with God. Yes. And for me, the lesson that I learn from all this is that when these guys were going, when they decided to expand the place where they were going to live and they needed to do some construction, yes. they asked Elisha to come with them. Mm-hmm. Now, they were not going to preach. They were not going to raise a dead person. Mm-hmm. They were not going to, to perform some other miracle. 
They were going to do an ordinary task, put up a house, but they still wanted Elisha to come with them. And this is what I'm learning. There is nothing too small. There is nothing too normal. There is absolutely nothing that we cannot invite God into. So these guys, they would have comfortably gone and cut down those trees without the prophet. They would have put up those houses without the prophet, but they needed his presence. What they did not know is that his presence was going to make the difference. And this is the truth. God's presence in any situation makes all the difference. Oh, yeah. God makes, takes something small and he magnifies it and it becomes big. God takes a small challenge and he magnifies, no, a small answer and he magnifies it and it becomes a big answer. With God in my life, with God in my situation, no matter whether it's at work, whether it's at church, whether it's in the neighborhood where we live, whether it's at school, wherever God is, you can count him to do something great in that particular situation. So lesson number one. Lesson number one, when in need, ask for help. Ask for help. Please don't die in depression. Cry out and shout, I need help, and God will help you. And lesson number two. With God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible, including the floating of metal, you know, including that which nobody else believes is, is, is possible. And lesson number three is that in everything that we do, big or small, invite God into it. And... He will make a way. Pray with us, Dana. Okay, let's pray. Dear Lord, we come before you with thanksgiving in our hearts, for we have listened from your word, and uh, we have learned from it, O oh Lord. Thank you for reminding us that, Lord God, in all situations, O oh God, you continue to be God, and we can come to you in prayer as we ask for help. Also, we want to say thank you that you have remind, reminded us that there is nothing, absolutely nothing, that is impossible in you. So thank you so much. And thank you also, Lord, that you have reminded us that we, can, we should always involve you in everything that we do. No matter how small they are, no matter how big they are, we should rem uh, remember to invite you in that situation. So be glorified and be magnified for this Bible lesson. And we pray that God, everybody who is going to hear from this word may be blessed the same way that we have been blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So that's the end of our lesson. And it's always nice to share God's word with us. We would want to invite you to be part and parcel of what it is that we are doing. You can give generously towards this ministry. We continue to... Um, be on air. We are able to share God's word, the memory verses, and the Bible time because of your generosity. So there's a pay bill number right there. You can go ahead and give a contribution and may the Lord bless you as you continue to support us. And another thing, of course, please, we want you to wear a lovely Uncle Paul's Ark t shirt. All right. We want you to go wearing these. And when people ask you, what is this all about? You'll tell them, oh, yeah, these are my peeps. These are my friends. These are my guys. You can catch up with them on YouTube. Oh, yes. All right. And then they will come and watch the lesson and they will be blessed. Yes. And then, of course, you must remember to like this uh, lesson. Subscribe if you have not, and remember to share it with somebody you know who has never watched an Uncle Paul's Ark Bible time. So may God bless you, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Yes. Let's cast our burdens to the Lord. Oh, yes. All right? Cast your burdens unto Jesus, for he cares for you. Cast your burdens. Jesus, Lord.